H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to the videos of H2K Infosys. Uh, thanks for watching this particular video. In this particular vi video, we are going to see examples of functions without parameters. Okay, so we are going to see the practical example of the functions without parameters. And for this, I am going to open up Eclipse. And in Eclipse, I am going to create a new project called as Session 16. Click on next and click on finish and say no for the perspective change. So in this particular project called session 16, I'm going to create a new package called as function without parameters. And with the same name, I'm going to create the class file. So I'll copy it, click on finish. Inside this package, I'll create a class file with the same name. And call the main method so that I can, can get the result of the uh, code inside the console of Eclipse. So before I speak about functions without parameters, let me speak about the main method. Now we have seen that main method is basically used so that the compiler writes down or rather reads the compiler reads the course written within the body of the main method and throws the result of this group of statements within the console of Eclipse. If we don't use the main method, we will not get the result of the course written within the body of the main method in the console of Eclipse. Now main method is considered as an inbuilt method or function of the java language now we see out here that the main method or the main function is a public functions and it's static by nature and it has a return type as void so i'm not going to disclose the fact that why main method is public and why main method is static okay but i'm going to disclose today why main method is void okay so I will discuss about public and static when the concept of uh, access specifiers and oops comes respectively. And that is where I am going to define why main method is public and why main method is static. Now, as far as today's session is concerned, I'm going to speak about why main method is void. Now, void is nothing but a return type. Void return type means an empty return type or no return. Okay. So if it is an empty return type, it can return data which can be in float format. It can return data which can be in double format. It can return data which can be in integer format. It can return data which can be in long format. Return data which can be in your Boolean format or return data which can be in character format or return data which can be in string format. Since void return type returns an empty it returns empty that means it's an empty return type that means it does not return anything so i can return anything any kind of data format be it integer long float double etc and that is the reason why main method is having a return type as void return type if i define a main method as a return type of the main method is defined as integer so the returned statement should return a value which should have integer data so if our main method is defined as a double return type, it should return a value which should be of double format. Now, when we write the codes inside the body of the main method, those codes gets executed by the compiler and the results are seen in the console. The console shows the result for a string format, console shows the result in integer format or in long or double or whatever it is. 
so if we define specifically the main method as a integer return type it should return a value which should be in integer format otherwise the compiler is going to show syntax error and the reason for main method being a having a void return type is that so that it can return anything anything means it can return float double long integer character boolean string types of data that is why the java guys have made the main method with a void return type now let's get back to the functions without parameters so as we have seen that you cannot create a function inside another function now let's say this is a main method the main method is an inbuilt function of java so whatever function i create right now will be your user defined function so let's create a function inside a function this, this is the body of the main method so inside the body of the main method i create a function now for the purpose of understanding at this point of time whatever functions i create will be public static and void return with with void return types okay we'll create other types of functions which can be non static functions or with other type of access specifier or with other types of return types at a later point of time as far as this particular session is concerned i will stick to a public function which is static into nature having a return type as void so let us create a function inside the body of the main method so public static void let's say the function is addition and this is a parenthesis followed by the addition method and the parenthesis doesn't have any parameters that is why this is a function without parameters and the function is followed by a curly brace that is opening curly brace and a closing curly brace this becomes the body of the addition function now i have created this function inside the body of another function that is not allowed and that is why we say that functions are independent or functions have the same hierarchy now if you see out here there is a red cross sign it will give you multiple syntax errors void is an invalid type syntax error insert this syntax error on token addition annotation name expected after this token illegal modifier for parameter addition only final is permitted syntax error insert comma to complete the block statement all this syntax error is coming because you cannot create a function inside a body of another function and the, the reason is that functions are independent of each other they should be created independent of each other or other functions have the same hierarchy so instead so i am going to comment it first and what i am going to do i am going to copy this code and put it outside of the main method the main method is ending out here this is the body of the main method this is the ending curly brace or the closing curly brace after this i can create n number of functions that is why we see that this function is independent of this function or this function is independent of this function main method or the main function is a inbuilt function this addition function is a user defined function the next thing i told that function should be made within the class file if you look at the main method the main method is created inside the body of the class file so if you put our cursor after the opening curly brace of the class file this is the class file name and i double click out here this shows me the body of the class file so inside the body of the class file you see that the main method is created and the addition user defined function is created or the addition function is created so always remember that we need to create functions within the body of the class file if we try to create a function outside of the body of the class file so this is the body ending for the class file outside of this body of the class file i create the function i will get the syntax error again and the syntax error will be duplicate method addition in type function without parameters okay so at this point of time let's understand that you should create function as part of your class file and duplicate function you can have you cannot have duplicate function name you can have same function name but between different parameter types so i can change the parameter type let's say i can put a string parameter let's say p1 
then duplication will go in the syntax error has gone but there is a syntax error out here it says that syntax error insert a closing curly brace to complete the class body the why this particular syntax error is, be, is being shown it is trying to say that this addition function having a parameter type as string should be put within the class body so that is what I, I try to say that all functions should be part of the class body. Now if you see this function and uh, this function name is same. But the parameter types is different for this function and parameter type is different for this function. For this function, the parameter type is of string. For this function, the parameter type is nothing. It's a no argument function or a no parameter function. So please understand one particular thing that function should be made within the body of the class file so i'll comment this for reference now let's create this particular function so the body of the addition function should have the group of statement or nothing but the codes so this function is to add numbers so let's say i want to add two numbers so i need to define an integer a whose value is equal to 10 and an integer b whose value is equal to 20 and you define an integer c whose value is equal to a plus b and then i use a sys out statement and write down the value of the variable c present in addition function is to be concatenated with the variable c out here so this is how the function is created and i can call this function this is a user defined function i can call this function n number of times now first thing first i have created the function this is the body of the function these are the set of codes for the function so this will add two numbers whenever I call this function called addition function okay now let's say I run the class file if I run the class file I will not see any result in the console of Eclipse the console does not show any result and that is because the addition function is a user defined function it has to be called inside the body of the main method why the usage of the main method is to bring the control inside it what do you mean by that the compiler will read the codes written within the body of the main method and throw the results in the console of eclipse now have i called the addition function inside the body of the main method i have not called addition function is a user defined function user defined function needs to be called inside the main method to get the result of it since i have not called the addition function inside the body of the main method I'm not getting the result of the addition function so how do i call it i put my cursor within the body of the main method so this is the body of the main method so i put my cursor out here and use control key and the space bar key i will get the addition function out here and the addition function is called and after calling it is terminated by a terminator sign now, if you look at the function called the function format turns to an italic format so whenever i call the function inside the body of the main method it turns to a italic format so this italic format will make us understand that we have called a function inside the main method generally in this particular scenario when i had created the function it is in non-italic format but when i call this addition function inside the main method it turns to a italic format so looking at the italic format we will understand that it is a function called inside the main method now after calling it if i save the class file and run it i will see the value of the variable c present in addition function is 30. so this stuff is coming from where this is stuff is coming from the println command defined inside the body of the addition function now as i have told you i can call this addition function n number of times i can write it directly like this again if i call this particular particular function the value will remain same and it throws out the println command defined inside the body of the addition function and the println command throws 
the value of the variable c present in addition function is 30. So this is printed out because the function is called in the main method. So when the compiler moves from left to right, it encounters this function. Immediately compiler moves to this body part of the addition function, executes this. And that is why we get the print and command in the console of Eclipse, like this. Similarly, when it touches down again, remember compiler moves from left to right and top to down. So when it touches down to code num uh, line number 12, it again finds the addition function. The moment it finds the addition function, the compiler moves the control to the body part of the addition function, execute this code again, and will print out this particular stuff in the console of Eclipse. And that is why if you see out here, there is a repetition of the same print and command, and the value remains 30. The value cannot change. So like addition function, we can create other functions also. For example, if I want to create another function, let's say subtraction. So remember, this is the main method or main function. This is the body ending. This is the addition function. This is the body of the addition function. Outside of this body, another function can be created. Let's say public static void, let's say subtraction. The subtraction function name has to be followed by a parenthesis and this is the opening and the curly brace which defines the body of the subtraction function. Here we will define an integer a which is equal to let us say 20, integer b which is equal to 10 and then integer c which is equal to a minus b. And then a print and command S Y S O U T, and I can write down the same stuff the value of the variable C in the addition function. I'll just change the the value of the variable C in the subtraction function is concatenate with the variable C out here. Now. If I run this class file after saving, I will not, go, not get the value for the subtraction function. And this is because I have not called the subtraction function inside the main method. And how do I call it? Just put my cursor below the addition function. Just click the control key followed by the space bar. You will get the subtraction function. So when the compiler comes to the subtraction part or subtraction function, Okay, the minute the compiler moves to the body part of subtraction and what will be printed out? This value. So what value will be printed out? 20 minus 10 is 10. So if I save the class file and run it, I will see the value of the variable C present in subtraction function is 10. I can call this subtraction function n number of times. Control space bar, again call it. And I save the class file and run it. I will get the repeated value and the repeated value will be 10 for the subtraction fun function called for the second time. So like subtraction, I can basically create another function. Functions are independent of each other. So public static void multiplication function. So I can have uh, integer a which is equal to let's say 20 and integer b which is equal to 30 uh, integer c which is equal to a multiplied by b and uh, sys out I can basically copy this Just have to change the value of the variable C present in the multiplication function is function is concatenate with C and I have to call this multiplication function inside the main method otherwise I will not get the result in the console of Eclipse. So control space bar click on multiplication. I can call the multiplication function n number of times. 
So we like multiplication, I can call create a division function. So what I will do, I'll copy this to save time. I'll call this as a division function. Okay. And this let's a be 10, b be 20, um, a be 20, b be 10. And I'll divide a slash b. And this slash sign is used for your division. And it will show me the value of 20 divided by 10. 20 divided by 10 is 2. Okay. So I can write down the value of the variable c present in the division function is concatenate with the variable c. And if I want to get the result of the division function, I need to call it inside the main method. I can call it n number of times. Control space bar division function. And if I save this class file and run it, I'll get the value of the division function and that is equal to 2. So 20 divided by 2, 20 divided by 10 is 2. That is what I am getting. The next function that I can create is I can create innumerable functions inside the class body. So the next function that I'm creating is public started void. Let's say the modulus function. So I'll again have the same stuff. I'll copy this and put it out here. The only thing that I'll do is that the value of 22 out here instead of the forward slash sign which is used for division I'll use the percentage sign the percentage sign will give you the remainder of this division so 22 will be divided by 10 so 10 twos are 20 the remainder will be 2 so that 2 remainder will be seen and the result if we have a print and command. So if I print, print out the result, the value of the variables is present in the modulus function is concatenated with the variable c out here. If I want to call this function, I have to call it inside the body of the main method. So control space bar modulus. This will give you the remainder of the division. And I can call this function also n number of times. So if I save this class file, I run it. I'll get the value of the modulus function as, as I told you, this is the remainder 2. Okay. If I divide this by, for example, 20, 20 divided by 10, what is the remainder? Remainder is 0. So if I save the class file and run it, I'll get the remainder as 0 for the modulus function. Now, there are two observations that we need to see. One observation is that in all the functions, B is addition, subtraction, multiplication or division or in modulus, I am using the same variables A, B and C and it does not show me a syntax error that is a duplicate local variable. Why it is not showing you a syntax error? The, result, the reason for that I will let you know in the coming sessions of Java. But if you see out all these functions called addition function or subtraction function or multiplication function or division function or modulus function uses the same variables integer a, integer b and integer c and the compiler is not showing you any duplicate local variable as a syntax error. What is the reason for that? When we see other sessions of Java, I will explain you this particular fact. These are nothing but considered as local variables for that particular function. So we will see that in the later session. The other observation that we need to see is that whenever I am calling the addition function, I can call any functions any number of times. Now let us say in this particular scenario, I am calling the addition function twice. If you see the console result, the console result shows the addition, the value of the addition function always at 30. Similarly, I have called the console I have called the subtraction function twice. So whenever I see the console result for these two subtraction functions called twice, I am getting the result as 10. So that means the result remains fixed. It is not changing. 
so this kind of functions without parameters creates a kind of restriction or create creates a kind of static behavior for the functions so whenever i am calling this subtraction function i have call it twice the value of this subtraction function remains same same rather it is 10 out here so this creates a kind of you know restriction so whenever i am calling the subtraction function i am getting the same value that should not be the case function should be dynamic in nature the how do you create functions which have dynamic nature for that particular functions or for that particular reason we need to actually see functions with parameters so rather functions with parameters will create a dynamicity in the functions functions without parameters creates a restrictions and the restriction is that i am able to call the functions n number of times inside the main body but the result of this function remains same for example the sub for example the subtraction function shows the result as 10 i should have a procedure in which i should get different values for the functions called so i am calling this subtraction function two times i should get two different values and this is possible when you have a dynamicity maintained in the functions and dynamicity can be maintained in the functions by creating function with parameters which we are going to see in the later sessions so that's about it that is what we required to understand and uh, if you have any questions please revert to you us thanks very much appreciated your time